In life, he was the most magnificent beast ever to take to the wing. He ruled the sky supreme, flying far and wide over the lands of the dinosaurs. This is the story of the last journey this giant ever made. Ornithocyrus, 12 meters from wingtip to wingtip, and a body bigger than a man's, he is the undisputed king of the skies. This giant is over 40 years old. Most of his life has been spent wandering the globe in search of food. But every year, there is a dramatic interruption to this nomadic lifestyle. It will soon be time to find a mate. Instinct is telling the Ornithocyrus that it is time to move on. He must leave these shores and return to his breeding site in Europe, on the other side of the world. For this giant of the sky, it will be the last great flight he ever makes. What he is about to undertake is the most astounding journey in the animal kingdom. From the shores of the great southern continent, he will travel to north, cross the Atlantic Seaway and fly onto the islands which spread out below him will be the majesty and migrating pterosaur. The Ornithocyrus is grounded by the heavy rain, frustrating his urge to get to the breeding site. He shelters as best he can. The fine downy fur that covers his body needs to be kept dry. The Ornithocyrus waits impatiently in his cave and busies himself with grooming. He is plagued by biting parasites that tap into the blood vessels on his wing membrane. If he is to find a mate, he must be in prime condition. He has to keep the parasites in check. But time is short. His body is already showing the first signs of readiness for mating. Faint colors have started to bloom on his beak's display crest. At last, he can resume his epic journey. For thousands of kilometers, he follows the coast of his enormous wings to ride on the warm air currents that rise over land. His whole body weighs less than 100 kilograms, and this helps him glide effortlessly over huge distances. But soon he must face open water. This is the young Atlantic. It is still only 300 kilometers wide. To reach the other side, he will need all his gliding skills to exploit the air currents that form over waves. Along the way, he must feed.
But flying low brings its dangers. Hungry monsters. An entire day on the wing, and he has arrived on the most western of Europe's islands. Clear waters of the lake. Its success has not gone unnoticed by Ornithocarus. Turns bully. In the background, the Ornithocarus sits safe on his rock. The raptors are closing in. High above, the Ornithocarus has to leave these killing fields for a safer place to pass the night. He finds what appears to be an ideal spot to rest before his final push to the mating grounds. For the Onithocyrus, the birds look no bigger than insects, the pterosaur, especially among the branches and twigs of dense forests. In the far future, the pterosaurs will surrender the skies to the birds. Driven on, he eventually reaches the huge island of Cantabria, which will one day be the bedrock of Spain. He is exhausted by his 14,000 kilometer journey. Ahead lies the mating ground. Every year of his adult life, he has returned to this same spot to mate. Already the beach is full of male Ornithocyrus noisily competing for space. As the old male approaches, he knows from experience that the nearer the center of this intimidating throng, the more attractive he will be to the females. He heads straight for the dominant position he has occupied in previous years, right in the middle. But this time, he faces a challenge to his supremacy. Again and again, he tries to land but the males on the ground fend him off. Eventually his weariness tells and he has to land elsewhere. His position among the males has been usurped by younger animals. They advertise their vigor and size to warn off rival males and to attract females out of the air. For the outcast, the world has been turned upside down. Now banished to the outskirts of the mating area, he will be lucky to attract a female at all. In the blistering heat of midday, his instincts force him to keep trying. The 
females are unmoved. The center of the beach. A female has just landed and now submits herself to a male who flashes his red crest to impress her. Mating itself is brief. Afterwards, the male will resume displaying in the hope of attracting yet more females. The female herself will now leave. Three days later, and at last the breeding site is emptying of males. It is still fiercely hot. Our Ornithochiris has yet to mate. Worse still, his fruitless exertions under the blazing sun have taken a heavy toll. Heat stress and lack of food have all but killed him. The king of the skies has lost his majesty. His life has run full circle. In his time, he traveled the globe, but death finds him here, in the very same place where he first mated some 40 years ago. On the beach around him are others who lost out in this struggle to reproduce. But nature is seldom wasteful. They have become food for the next generation. <laughs>